Hello everyone, today I want to talk to you about how the Americans are at it again, grabbing up businesses this time. They're after shares in major chip companies. Also, DeepSeek's new AI large model is shifting towards using domestic chips. Even top American investors are surprised, asking why so many US companies are using AI that's close to China. Recently, a Chinese children's song from the 1960s has become popular online. The lyrics go, Americans are bandits, smiling on the surface but carrying big knives behind their backs. Whenever they see something good, they want it all. If they can't get it, they'll just take it by force. Now the Americans are at it again, this time grabbing shares in major chip companies. On August 19, reports surfaced that the Trump administration plans to use CHIPS Act subsidies to acquire shares in Intel, Micron, Samsung, and TSMC, raising concerns in US markets. Commerce Secretary, how Lutley confirmed this equity for subsidy plan, stating the federal government is negotiating with Intel to exchange its approved CHIPS Act subsidies for 10% of its shares, potentially making the government Intel's largest single shareholder. The whole thing can be traced back to when Trump, on August 8th, announced that Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger should resign, accusing Gelsinger of having improper ties with China and a serious conflict of interest. At the time, the public thought it was quite rare for a U.S. president to demand the resignation of a corporate executive. But just a week later, on August 13th, after Trump met with Gelsinger at the White House, his attitude did a complete 180. This was a very interesting meeting, and Gelsinger's success and rise is a remarkable story. He asked Gelsinger, along with the Secretary of Commerce and the Secretary of the Treasury, to present their recommendations to him the following week. So, what kind of recommendations were these? Afterwards, news came out that Gelsinger had agreed to let the US government take a stake in Intel. Originally, the CHIPS Act planned to provide Intel with a $1 billion subsidy, but now the US government wanted to exchange that subsidy for a 10% stake in Intel. Intel was struggling with its operations and desperately needed continued government subsidies, so it was the first to comply. Rodnick later mentioned in a CNBC interview that the Biden administration was essentially giving money away for free to companies like Intel and TSMC back then. Trump would reverse the situation, turning it into a case where the government would acquire equity after providing subsidies. Rodnick also emphasized that even if the government took a stake, it would not receive voting rights or board seats. This isn't about control over management. They just want to turn the grants given during the Biden administration into equity under the Trump administration so that the American people can get a return. These shares do not carry voting rights. Industry insiders revealed that Rodnick is also looking into acquiring stakes in companies like Micron, TSMC, and Samsung. According to insiders, these companies have received $6.6 billion, $6.2 billion, and $4.75 billion in subsidies from the U.S. government, respectively, and may also be indirectly nationalized through government shareholding. The White House claims this is an innovative approach that will make these companies prioritize America's needs. According to sources cited by the Wall Street Journal, TSMC executives have discussed how to respond if the Trump administration demands a stake in the company. Their response measures include returning the subsidies to the U.S. government, as they are unwilling to let the U.S. take a stake in their companies. To sum it up, first, under the Biden administration, the U.S. government promised to grant large subsidies to encourage major chip giants to set up factories in the U.S. Operating factories in the U.S. is costly and there aren't enough engineers or skilled workers. Without subsidies, no one would be willing to set up shop in the U.S. Second, when Trump came to power, he wanted to overturn these subsidies and instead greatly increase tariffs on imported chips to force companies to return to the U.S. Third, that's not only Trump, seeing an opportunity, now wants to use subsidies as leverage to demand shares in these companies. Rodnick also said that the Biden administration is basically giving money to companies like Intel and TSMC for free. He completely failed to mention the fact that without subsidies, no one would even consider coming to the U.S. to set up factories. With the U.S. government acting so unreasonably, we know that building factories in the U.S. carries significant hidden risks. In addition, on August 22, mainland and Hong Kong chip stocks surged A-share Hengwu technology rose by 20%, Hong Kong listed Zhongxin up by 15%, and Hua Hong climbed 17.8%. 
It's estimated that this is related to the release of the new version 3.1 version of the DeepSeq AI large model. This upgrade to the DeepSeq large model includes some major changes, such as a hybrid inference architecture, allowing a single model to support both reasoning and non-reasoning modes, as well as achieving higher reasoning efficiency. Compared to previous models, it can provide answers in a shorter amount of time and has even stronger AI assistant, or agent, capabilities. In addition, DeepSeek specifically emphasized that the newly announced version 3.1 version uses UE8 MOFP8 scale parameter precision. DeepSeek stated that this new parameter precision is designed for the next generation of domestic chips that will be released soon. This shows that DeepSeek is shifting towards using domestically produced AI chips. This parameter precision, which sounds very complex and quite a mouthful, is a technical term. You can imagine it as a highly concentrated storage format adopted to make AI models more refined, faster, and more energy efficient. It compresses parameters from 32-bit to 8-bit FP8 using smart scaling to minimize accuracy loss. It's like taking an entire encyclopedia, the content of high precision parameters, and recording it on a small card using summaries and key points, which are the low precision parameters. Although some details are lost, the essential information and overall outline can still be preserved. As a result, you get a lightweight version of the AI model, compact in size and fast in computation. Although it sacrifices a bit of accuracy, it still performs well in most situations. This technology is currently the way to bring AI into everyday life, allowing it to run on all kinds of daily devices. When AI operates on smartphones and laptops, it doesn't take up much space, runs faster, and is more energy efficient. I also believe that this new version of DeepSeek marks another breakthrough, and it will be widely adopted on architectures using domestically produced AI chips. The Economist in the UK published an analysis on August 21st, stating that American AI giants are racing to invest huge sums in developing proprietary models, with very high paywalls. However, Chinese companies are waging a completely different battle, developing open source models and attracting a large number of developers by offering them for free or at low cost. Andrew Ng, AI expert at Santa Ana University and the father of Google Brain, described that among the large language models developed by Chinese companies, developers are comparing which one is more open. This is a Darwinian life and death struggle. When he and his partner Casada walked into the office of the renowned venture capital firm Andreessen Horowitz, they found that many of the AI large models used by the startups they invested in actually came from China. He said that the probability of using Chinese open source models is as high as 80%. According to The Economist, starting from today, when the Chinese startup DeepSeek made an advanced AI model, developed at low cost, freely available, it became an overnight sensation and shook global stock markets. Afterwards, the aftershocks from DeepSeek continued, and Chinese AI models from tech giants like Alibaba and other companies quietly launched overseas as well, attracting more and more attention. The Economist says that in various intelligence tests released this year, Chinese open source models have outperformed similar models from American companies like Meta, and their capabilities are steadily approaching those of the top proprietary, closed source models. The article argues that the competitive drive of Chinese developers should serve as a wake up call for the West. Take OpenAI, the developer behind the Big Brother ChatGPT, as an example. Its CEO, Sam Altman, recently admitted in an interview that China's open source battle has put tremendous pressure on OpenAI, forcing them to change their model release strategy. Back in the mid 2010s, OpenAI once promoted the idea of greater openness in the AI field. The company's name, OpenAI Open, also comes from this concept. But after 2020, in order to stay profitable, OpenAI stopped being open and shifted to selling only proprietary large language models, refusing to fully open source their technology. Anyone who wants to use it extensively has to pay a hefty fee. It wasn't until recently that Altman suddenly realized something was off. His clients were significantly increasing their use of open source models, including those from China.
OpenAI had no choice but to change its approach, launching two free, open, lower tier models in August. This is the first time since releasing ChatGPT2 in 2019 that OpenAI has published models with open weights. According to some US media, this move marks a major strategic shift for a company that has long managed its technology in a closed manner. OpenAI aims to bet on improving technological accessibility and expanding its developer ecosystem to strengthen its advantage over Chinese competitors. But critics argue that these two open source models from OpenAI have been stripped of many core, powerful features, making them not very useful. In the same week, OpenAI also released the highly anticipated latest proprietary model, ChatGPT5, but it was met with equally poor reviews and backlash. Facing a wave of criticism, they had no choice but to abandon ChatGPT5 and revert their prediction model back to the previous version. This setback left Altman deeply shocked. But according to The Economist, this just proves that OpenAI's so-called embrace of openness lacks sincerity, and other American companies might be the same. Moreover, their closed proprietary products also lack innovation. The conclusion is, first, the cost of developing models at OpenAI is too high, so they can't be made freely available. This creates a significant opportunity for Chinese models to enter the market. It was only in the end that OpenAI founder Altman realized that their previously closed model and practices were on the wrong side of history. However, their high costs mean they don't have the option of being fully open. Second, DeepSeek's lightweight new AI model, which is compact and runs quickly, poses an even greater challenge to OpenAI. The key point is that it will no longer rely on American chips.